Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. Thanks for joining me today. It is chilly this morning here in Virginia, so I'm inside as usual crafting, but I have a good excuse since it's cold outside. All right, so today we are going to make a fun um, mini album, mini journal, whatever you want to call it, folio. And I am making this out of, let me see what I've decided to do. Um, five, five by five inch squares. That's what we're, we're going to use. So pull out whatever papers you want to use so that you can craft with me. And what I did today <laughs> is I decided to challenge myself and I'm only using things that I had already printed or that are on my desk. So whatever's kind of in my stash of things to be used, papers, um, or little pieces and bits that are on my desk. So we're gonna see how I do. I have not made one of these and hopefully this will go smoothly. <laughs> As always, I will put the measurements um, and the scoring and things in the description for you so you can follow along that way and refer to that and hopefully we won't get confused. Um, I have not made one of these, but full disclosure, this is take two. Um, I made an error that I couldn't figure out how to fix on camera and I don't normally do that. I normally just craft right through it, but um, I did have to start over. I hadn't gotten too far in. So here we go. So some of the scoring on these have already been done, but, but not everything. All right, so start with five five inch square pieces of paper. Now, if you're using digital kits, you'll need at least three like copy size paper pieces, right? I didn't print on both sides, you can, it's optional. I'm gonna do a lot of layering on mine is my, my thought. Um, if you wanna use scrapbook paper, obviously you can get four five by five squares out of one piece of 12 by 12. You'll need three eight and a half by 11 or A4s to get your five five inch squares. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so pick the one that you want to be your cover. And I'm gonna have this one be my cover. And the first thing you're gonna do is score it at a half an inch. Pretty easy, it's gonna have a hinge. And this is how we're gonna start attaching the papers. The second piece you're gonna do, this is the only one that you don't score at that half an inch. This one we are gonna score right in the middle at two and a half. Okay, two and a half right there. All right. Uh, this piece, we're gonna score just at the half an inch and it's already scored for me, but just for the video's sake. And it actually has a piece of paper glued to it, but that isn't gonna be seen, so it doesn't matter. So another one at half an inch. Yours does not need that. That's just the paper that I have and I'm trying to use what I already had printed. Your fourth piece, I want you to score again at half an inch and at three inches. Okay, I've already scored mine. So half an inch and three inches. And then your last piece, you're gonna score at a half an inch. Now again, I will have that in the description. You basically have all but one of them that gets scored at a half an inch. You have one that gets scored at two and a half, right? <laughs> you know, but I'll have it listed for you because it's not hard at all. So the first thing you wanna do, now my paper did not have any direction to it. If yours had direction to it, you would wanna make sure that it was spacing up because my score's here on the left and this is gonna be the cover and this is the hinge, okay? I didn't think to, to mention that when we were when we were crafting. So the second page of your book is the one that you scored at two and a half, just that one fold. Before you do anything with that, we are gonna glue this page to this hinge. And I am going to glue it so that this is gonna turn into a uh, little pocket. And I want to make sure that the printed side of my paper is what's showing. So that is why I am gonna glue the printed side to the white side. I'm gonna use my wet white glue. This is the Line Co brand PVA glue. And we're gonna add it just to this panel right here, just on that 
half an inch hinge. If you would like to see some of the supplies I use, I will have my Amazon um, storefront link for you in the description. Um, you don't have to go check out my the, my supplies, but if you'd like to, Amazon, and you buy something, Amazon does give me a few pennies. It's no cost to you, but I'm supposed to tell you guys that. But that's there for your convenience so you can get some ideas. And I do get asked all the time. This is the glue that I use pretty much every day. You can find it in different sizes on Amazon, but again, there's a link if you want to look at the different adhesives that I like. My other favorite glue is the Popular Art Glitter Glue, and it's a favorite as well. I find the Line Co. PVA is a little more, a little less expensive, so. Okay, so now we have a cover and we have our page two. Now I'm gonna pick one of the pieces that I only scored at the half inch and we are gonna glue this hinge right on top of that. And this is going to be our next page. And again, you can decide if you want, you know, we're, we're, if you are like me and you only print it on one side, if I turn my hinge that way, when I open it up, we'll have white, we'll have this little pocket page, and then we'll have the pattern and back to white. Again, it, it, it's really up to you what, what you wanna do. I am gonna glue mine so that I have white, pocket page white. Cause like I said, I'm gonna layer and add pockets and things to mine, so I'm not too worried about it. So again, I'm gonna add glue just to the hinge just like this and try to be neat if you can. It is definitely gonna help everything come together, but we can fix it or trim it up, you know, if you get a little bit off. I'll just be as careful as I can to line that up. Now these papers happen to be for my Feeling Like Fall Paper Kit on Etsy, so I'll link that for you in the description too. And then some of these other papers, like I'm hoping to use this really pretty bird. I may have to trim it down, but um, I have, these are Edith Holden inspired digitals from a seller on Etsy, who I will link in the description as well. And I can't remember the name of the kit, but um, they're really pretty and haven't used them yet. There's a bird. I haven't even printed them all, but sunflower. These are the ones that I printed just to see the colors. <laughs> so again, challenging myself to only use what I had already printed. Okay. So now we have the cover. This is gonna be a pocket page. We have this page. Now I'm going to go to the piece that we scored. We scored this one at a half an inch and at three inches. And this is gonna be another pocket page. So again, you can kind of make your decision on how you wanna do it. I definitely don't, I definitely wanna see the patterned paper and not just the white paper, so I'm trying to decide which way I want to do it. I'm going to do it this way. All right, glue to the hinge, and it's pretty easy, and I've seen other creators use this style of binding, and like I said, it's similar to some that I've done before and that I've seen, but I did change the size of it. I wanted to be able to use digital Papers, you know, papers I already had on hand and not, not just scrapbook paper, but you certainly can use your 12 by 12 paper, or your six by six paper, and just cut it to size. Okay, everything's looking okay. We're looking good. And now we're gonna put in the, the, the cover, the, la the back cover. So it's gonna be this piece. And again, I just happened the patterns that mine are two of the same, but they don't have to be. You could do all of them the same. You can do all of them different. Like I said, you can print on both sides. Whatever makes you happy. I think the big thing is, again, just trying to line this up fairly neatly. And because mine are of a similar color palette, you don't really notice I don't think you know that these are stacked together. You could always wrap some fabric or lace or washi tape or something on that spine if you wanted to. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four. Isn't that cute? All right, and if I counted this cover, that's five. So one, two, 
three, four, back cover is five. Now, here you have choices. I am going to, I think I'm gonna leave this one actually as a flip open page. And then this one I'm gonna glue as a pocket. And before I glue, I have to decide, do I wanna layer or cover up some of this white? And I think I do. And I am going to grab some book page. And if you guys watched one of my videos that just went out recently on how to do a hidden spine junk journal, I gutted a couple of Reader's Digests. <laughs> um, one was from the 70s and one was from the 50s. I believe this is the one from the 50s. So I've got some really pretty, pretty book page to work with. And that was here at my desk. So I'm counting that as I'm allowed to use it for the project. <laughs> And I love to craft with book pages, as you guys know. And it's nice and thin. Those edges are great. I just threw it in my scrap bin. They are great for writing little words and quotes and things on. So I save, I don't save all of them, but I do save a lot of them. All right, I am going to use my ruler and I'm just using the actual little folio I have here to help me get this to the right height, which is five inches. I could have cut it on my trimmer. And I'm just gonna glue this down. It's so thin, I think it's gonna crease and fold okay. Maybe watch me do it and let's see how it does before you, you replicate, but I think it's gonna be fine. And a lot of times, as you guys know, I will plan a whole project out, I will have a sample made and show you. And, and I, I like videos that do that. I like to know what, if I'm gonna spend the time watching it, what am I making? But occasionally I do these where you just kinda, I say, okay, grab some stuff and let's craft and see what I come up with. And I've gotten feedback that you guys like both, right? So I'm trying to do a little bit of both as we go. But like I said, if you're like, wow, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this, just fast forward to the end. I will do a flip through after I'm done crafting and show you what we've made and then you can come back. Please come back <laughs> if you do that. Okay, I am just reinforcing these folds here. And like I said, if I'd print it on both sides, I might not need to layer, but I like that. I like that look. So this is going to turn into the pocket. Now I can decide, do I want to do some kind of notch? Do I want to leave it straight? I'm going to grab one of my different shaped punches. I've used this one before, it's a label shape. And I'm gonna make us a fun shaped notch here. I don't use this one for this that often, but I do like it when I do. Yeah, that looks fun. And you guys know me well too, before I start gluing everything down, I'm going to use some of my Walnut Stain Distress Ink and kind of make that pop a little bit so you really see that pocket there. And you can skip distress inking or you can do just a little or you can do a lot. I'm kind of doing probably more than I normally do here because my new ink pad is doing really well, making me happy. All right, so to make this pocket, all we're gonna do is add glue to the top and bottom of this flap just like that, and there you go. And we're gonna have this lovely side load pocket. Now, it, you, we're not gonna be able to put anything too big in here because it can't cross over you know, the fold line there or it won't fold up. So, like we couldn't put something this long in there or it'll get folded up. But we'll be able to put something in there, it'll be cute. Okay, and like I said, I think I'm gonna leave this one as a flap open page. But you could add glue here and here and make it a pocket or glue here and here and make it a top load. It would have to be something skinny, like a skinny tag. But I really think that would be cute. Okay, I am going to use some of these papers that I had printed in more book page and just start layering. I'm gonna save this bird because I'm hoping I can do something with the bird on the front cover, but I do love these sunflowers. I don't know if I 
cut any sunflowers into some squares. Let's see. Ooh, that's pretty too. All right, let's see if I can get a sunflower layered on here. Um, I'm gonna need to trim it, but that's okay. So because I put the half inch uh, hinges on here, these are now four and a half, five by four and a half inch kind of squares. So I need to take, how wide is this? This is like four and seven eighths. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a half an inch off. Hope that I just did public math correctly. And I believe this is my half an inch mark. And I have it lined up carefully. Let's see if this will nestle in here. Yes, it will. There's a little bit of a trim around it and that's okay with me. All right, again, I like being able to use <laughs> use things I have on hand. It's sometimes fun to craft that way. Sometimes it's, of course, fun to get out a, a, a really pretty paper kit that you have, whether it's scrapping paper or a digital one, and use all the pieces and make it look so pretty. But I also like the challenge at times of using what is, what is available without buying anything new or printing anything or opening up anything else. So hopefully we will have something really pretty at the end of this. So all I did for these pretty sunflowers for this page is I'm just gonna glue the whole thing down. And again, we may add a pocket or do something, but at this point I'm kind of interested in just getting my, my papers layered on as we go. This, I think, is going to lend itself perfectly to some book page. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before and use the album itself to help me measure the size I need for my book page. I'll add just a touch of ink. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. This is, as I mentioned, paper from a book. I think it was 1954. So it is quite fragile. It's great for layering, but I wouldn't use a piece of this all by itself. And it's a tour right there, which won't matter for my purposes, but you would definitely need to layer this on some cardstock like I'm doing, or at least glue, glue multiple pages together because it's a little fragile. The, the Reader's Digest books that I used to make the cover were in really good shape. The cover of the journal that I did recently, they were in very good shape, but um, the paper is quite fragile. All right, that worked okay. It's looking good. What do I wanna put here? Now, you know, I could make a tiny, no, then I've got that same problem if I do that and we don't have hardly any room, but, ha, I have another idea. We could, hmm. I'm gonna leave it as a flap and then we're gonna do a little tiny pocket here so some bigger things can stick out that way. I'll show you in a minute. I know, I'm getting excited and I'm getting ahead of myself. This is what happens to me when I'm um, in my craft room coming up with new designs and patterns uh, is I get excited and all of a sudden, um, I'm going to fold this piece in half. Let's see. It's an inch and a quarter. And I believe if I fold it in half, I'm going to have, yes, look at that. And then I'll get to have a little bit of an edge here like I had just talked about. Okay. I turn it this way. All right, I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to show you how I'm going to glue it. It's going to be a very shallow tuck spot on the other side because this wasn't a very wide piece of paper. I think it'll work. If not, I'll just glue it all the way down. So if you have a piece that's a little bit wider, and I'm sure I do, but what I could have done, maybe we should. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to glue it all the way down on this side just to make a decorative edge. And then on this side, I want this to be like just a tiny 
tiny tuck spot, but it's it would be better if it came out just a little bit more. It's a little narrow. So instead of using this one, I'm gonna use this piece. Maybe I'll use this piece. <laughs> just so I have a different pattern. And I am going to score this at a half an inch because I want that half an inch right here to cover up to have some pretty, pretty decor. And just make sure. And it actually needed to be wider than a half an inch. I'm going to eyeball it at this point. Come over just a little more. It doesn't have to come just right up to the book page. It can cover it up a little bit. There we go. Much better, right? So this is going to get glued down. This I am going to cut. And again, I know y'all are going to want measurements. Let's see. We're going to make this whole piece of paper three inches and it's not quite five but let's just call it three by five you're gonna score it so that you have enough to cover up where my book page didn't go and again depending on what you're layering with you may not need a piece that has these same measurements but this little hinge is three quarters of an inch not half an inch and I'm not gonna put it on as a hinge even though I could and we could have another little flippy page Instead, I am going to add some ink because I'm about to glue this all the way down and it won't be easy to ink once I do. Okay, I am going to glue it all the way down on this side. And you guys are gonna like this when I finally get it done. It, it's making all kinds of sense in my head and I'm probably gonna get all kinds of comments saying, you know what, plan your videos out. They're a little bit easier to follow. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now this looks cute. It's gonna be a page that does this, and we'll put something in here. And then on this side, I am going to, because I want it to be a little more narrow, I'm just gonna fold it another about three quarters of an inch doesn't look straight. Oh, it's okay. I don't know why it doesn't look straight. I'm going to glue this little flap down. And by the time I get this decorated and things stuffed in here, I won't notice that. So I'll be okay with it. And now I'm going to turn this into a little side load pocket. So I'm going to add glue to the top and the bottom or whichever direction this is now. Those two ends and I have a side load pocket on my flip out page. There we go. So cover, we have a flip page, goes like that. I may even put a piece of Velcro there, that would be fun, but let's see how it comes together. Now we need to decorate this page. And I think for this page, let's see. I don't want to just glue this on and then fold it. It's going to get me too much bulk right here at um, where, where my journal folds together. This, at the spine, or it's not really a spine, but at that hinge there. So I am going to trim off the half an inch. Half an inch. So it will fit in there. We'll double check everything here in a second. And I'll probably do another strip of book page just to keep that coming through my journal. So the book page is thin enough that I don't mind folding it into the crease. But this cardstock, this is the 90 pound, kind of a medium weight cardstock. It's definitely sturdier than just a piece of copy paper that would kind of flop over. Here's me find a piece of copy paper. I think I have a, a piece. <laughs> I, I say that and I can't reach it. All right, so see, this is copy paper. 
how it does that. And this definitely doesn't flop over, but it's not super thick, heavy duty. Uh, I'm going to, so I, I don't want to fold it up in here, but I definitely don't mind putting a strip of my book page my papers would tear out so much more neatly if I would take the time to cut the strings. I haven't done that yet. It's okay. I'll do that a little bit later because that is quite a thick book. Okay. Coming soon, by the way, is I got a request. And I'm, in fact, I may even film it later today. But coming soon is going to be probably a quick video. But sharing with you guys... Some of my favorite supplies, my basic supplies, kind of just my go-tos and and really showing it and going through it. Somebody asked for that and I am going to film a video. So I'm going to look at you know the inks that I like to use, the pens I like to use, the glue, my favorite papers, those types of things. And we're going to... To look at that um, my scissors just all that kind of stuff just to give um, some of the newer folks to uh, junk journaling and journal making some ideas of some of those things and like I said the ones that are available I get a lot of like my paper fiercer my ink pads these little dauber thingies you know just on Amazon but you can get most things at Michael's or Hobby Lobby some you have to do a little more specialty or you want some of the specialty ribbons and things perhaps at on Etsy or a craft or an art store but I'm going to go through just the basics and so if that's of interest to you let me know like I said I'm planning that I may even have it ready for today trying to decide if I want to put this book page that I kind of did a fun tear to the outside or if I'm going to do it this way and just have the strip here. I think I'm going to put it to the outside. I know it'll cover up some of the pattern, but it'll give this page a little different look. I do love to collage, as you guys know, and the leaving the book page at that fun torn angle, I think will lend this to be like a fun page I could just build a collage on maybe. We'll see. This is probably taking a little longer than I thought it would. I'm gonna peek when I get all these layers on and decide if I need to stop and make a part two to this little, to this little folio or if we can keep going and get it done. I try not to have my videos be too, too long because I know that can be a little overwhelming. All right. All right, we'd already done this page, so that's good. So now we just have this layer to do. And like I said, I am excited about doing that bird on the cover. Let me show you again what we have. It also helps me see what papers I've used. Okay. Let me think. This is part of that bird page and I set the square bird here that I'm going to trim up for the front so I don't know if I need the whole bird but maybe one of these purple poofy things what do you guys think I think so now I could again lay this on my paper trimmer but I'm just going to use my ruler I kind of like having that little bit of a rough edge and hopefully Hopefully I'm going to tear somewhat straight and it's going to fit in here. I may have to trim it just a touch. Let's see. And then this piece is going to be about four and a half inches. Again, I'm just going to use the book to help me see. And of course, it's not completely straight. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim off just a touch at the top. And I said I wanted the torn edge, but now I'm just going to even it up just a little bit with my trimmer. There we go. Best made plans. I think it'll look better if I do it that way. All right, and I'm going to use the book page 
that I just tore a moment ago, the piece that's left, and this one I'm gonna put it underneath. So I'll have a few that just have that strip of book page and then the one that I left the fun torn edge on. And I obviously don't need to be inking the parts that I'm gonna be gluing over. So we're gonna lay this layer down. Oh goodness. And I've been doing, I got really into all my Christmas crafts, as you guys know, really early, probably earlier than a lot of other uh, people you guys watch on YouTube. I was like, ah, thinking about um, all my holiday projects and my craft fair, but I have lots more to come. I love Christmas crafting. So I have some ideas. I'm thinking about uh, using my Santa and Friends kit and my Merry Trees kit to make some journal cover toppers. So basically coming up with some fun ways. I've already done some, but some fun ways to layer some of those papers to make some journal toppers because I want to give some of my friends this year for Christmas um, a, a family holiday Christmas kind of journal. So even though I won't be giving it to them too early in the season, the thought is they can use it in years to come in December to save some of their, their memories and things. So, Anyway, that's that's on my mind, and I thought if I did a video showing here's some different fun toppers for the covers of the journals, that might give you guys some ideas too, and I can get a few of those knocked out. You guys can tell me which ones you like. All right, I am really happy with the pages. Now it's time to decorate. Let me see how long the video is. Oh, we're only at 31 minutes. We're okay. We can keep going. You guys will stick with me, hopefully. Okay. This lovely bird is going to go on the front of my journal. And I think I want to trim it. I definitely have to trim it some. And again, this is four and a half now by five. So I'm going to make it four inches. I'm going to cut a tiny bit of his tail off because I want to keep some of this pink here. So we're going to go that way to four. I've got to trim a little bit more to get it exactly to four inches. Let's see. Yeah, that way we get to see some of the orange too. And then I'm going to take off, I don't know what, what this was already measuring out, but I just took a little bit off of the bottom. So I have a little bit more width on either side, and I'm okay with that, than the top. It ended up measuring almost four and three quarters by four. Cute. I like it. And let's also... Think of some kind of either a ribbon closure or a button closure or something that we think would look good. So I'm gonna give that some thought before I stick this down because if I wanna put a ribbon or something pretty underneath, that's a good way to hold the ribbon down. <laughs> so thinking that through before we glue, I, sitting here on my desk, some of my fun seam binding, and I've got the orange that definitely goes, the yellow is kind of pretty too. I don't think the pink, maybe with the blue and the yellow, I think that blue isn't quite right. All right, and I'm not gonna use the pink. So that leaves me with these. And I'm thinking definitely the yellow, and I'm wondering if I should do a double. Let's do a double strand. So I'm just going to figure out how long I need this to be. And I am going to stick it underneath this panel like this and come around and then tie it on the side. I will give you the measurement and this may be more ribbon than we need, but I'd rather have a little too much then not enough. Um, and then if you want to adjust yours, you can. So leaving it crinkled up like this, because you may use a different kind of ribbon that's not crinkly, right? But leaving it kind of crinkled up, not pulled out. We are 
right at 18 inches. Okay, if I stretch it out, <laughs> we are more like um, maybe 25 inches. All right, so before I glue this down and get my ribbon on here, I wanna do a little inking around the edge of the cover. We could do more inking in a little bit. I think I just inked this piece but this is the, your, your chance before you glue it down if you want it a little bit heavier inked or you want some more. We may put a little label or something else on here too in a minute. All right, I am going to, you don't want to put the center piece down. What you have to do is have more to wrap this way and all the way around. So the way I do that is I get my ends fairly even and then I kind of just pull it and I'm feeling pretty good about th this about having it glued at this point so I've left about let's see crinkled up about four and a half five inches pulled out we've got about seven inches on this side everything else is on this side I hope that makes sense. Now, I'm gonna use some two-sided tape to help hold my ribbon in place. And I don't want it to be wider than this piece because I don't wanna have sticky out here, all right? I'm gonna do, let's burnish it down a little bit if I can find the bone folder. I'm gonna probably do two pieces. Just get a little more width in there and I'm gonna try to lay the ribbon down flat. As flat as I can, so that it doesn't buckle and look funky underneath my bird. So, we don't want it to look funky. <laughs> All right, so take the first piece of ribbon and that's what I mean by kind of laying it flat. That is not how I wanted to do this, is it? Oh my goodness, y'all. Oh, I think we're okay though. I think we're okay. I just got all confused. So we're not wrapping it this way and coming around the back. We have it on the back and we're coming this way. Goodness gracious, this is why I usually don't craft on the fly. But you guys get my point. Hopefully you're watching me and didn't stick your ribbon or anything down just yet. But you'll make, it'll make sense in a second what I was concerned about. I told you guys, see, it worked the same way, that the ribbon had to reach all the way around. And for some reason, I was thinking I was going to be attaching it, even though I knew I was attaching it on the front. But let's see. We have plenty of ribbon, and it worked. So no worries. I got a little ahead of myself. All right, and now I'm gonna glue this piece down and it'll be a little bit of a bubble under there, but it's gonna work great. I'm gonna use, since I have it out, a little bit of my two-sided tape and probably a little bit of glue too. But I definitely want this to stick well. And the wet white glue would be enough, but what I was, what I really was thinking of when I said, oh, I'm gonna use some glue is I was gonna put it here in this middle section to stick to the ribbon. And then I put it at the top and bottom too, but that's all right. So I'm gonna put those pieces of the tape on here. And then I'm gonna put glue around the rest of this section. This will help lift that up for me. Sometimes I just use my finger now. Actually, this is the tool I was really trying to go for. I love using this to lift up my, my tape. It's the little spatula that um, is one of the Cricut tools. And when I'm using a lot of this kind of tape, I love, it just helps me get it up a little bit easier. Glue all the way around this panel. 
You can put some right on top of that two-sided tape just so that you get some wiggle room when we go to lay it down. We don't get it straight. If you have a little bit of glue over that tape, you can still move it. All right, this is not gonna go anywhere once I get it on. And just, there we go. I went a little closer to the top than the bottom. That's okay. I probably could have lifted it up and moved it before I started pushing it down with my hand, but it's all right. You may want to try to bring yours down a little bit. Oh, how pretty. I love that bird. I love birds. I am a little bit afraid of them in person, but I do love them as it like images and pictures and paintings and those types of things. So what I'm looking for in my little ephemera folder, and we made this, gosh, a few months ago now, and I am still enjoying using it for something. I wanted a little more of a pop to a label. I may have to pull out the, the big one. That's a little too large. I need to probably make some labels. I've not tried to do that. There's so many fun ones that I love already on Etsy. I haven't thought about making my own kit with some numbers and labels, but I might think about doing that. Let's see. The four doesn't really have um, any meaning, except I think I'm liking the color of this on those papers. Oh goodness. My garage door is opening. That means my husband, who is working from home today, is going outside or he's going to the post office. I had Etsy order and a Patreon package that had to go out today. Some packages. Uh, so he, when he's home, is he gave himself the title. He is my uh, chief um, shipping I think this was his chief of shipping or something. Anyway, he goes to the post office for me a lot and he enjoys it. So thank you, Tony. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to kind of center it there. I like having things go off the edges and things like that, but just kind of the way I put this paper on here, I think it looks better there. And then this just to give you an idea of what this is gonna look like. Let's just tie it up really quick because I wanna make sure I like it too. And we could have just done one piece of ribbon. You can use whatever kind of ribbon you have if you even want a closure. It doesn't have to have a closure. It's cute, right? <laughs> I love that seam binding. The crinkle is so fun. Okay, la -dee da Let's get it reopened. Now, everything is layered up. We can add more pockets. We can put some things in these little tuck spots. So again, here I am telling you guys we are gonna craft with what is on my desk. Now, luckily I am messy <laughs> and I have lots of bits and bobs. Here, this little box is gonna look really cute in one of the pockets. Which pocket do I like him in? Maybe this one, because I definitely know I needed something a little narrow for there. We'll just tuck him in for now. I'm trying to see things that are a little bit of a fall theme that might go. I don't know that I need an owl when I just put that bird on the front, but maybe we can use one of these postcards. This I obviously chopped up already. But we can have a postcard that's a portion of the postcard. That will be okay. Now this tuck spot, what I like about this one is it can hang over. Now when you go to open up this, it might act funky. It might act funky. You may not want to open. So maybe we don't want it to hang over. That's something I'll let you decide when you're playing with yours. I don't think I mind having it hang over like that. Now, let's see if we like any of these. Ooh, these flowers are pretty. So a lot of times when I print out a digital kit or digital paper or even the pieces from like a scrapbook kit, you know, if it has the paper and all the little pieces and if I don't use them, I like to keep them in my 
on my desk or my ephemera folders too, so that I have all the options later um, to just pull them out and have things to play with and to tuck in. I think this set right here kind of coordinates a little bit with my folder. So I'm gonna put this up for now. That one kind of does too. And we're gonna use some more of these pieces to make us a couple of more pockets that I think will be sweet in this journal. So I would like one that's shaped a corner. I'm trying to decide if I want it to be tall or if I want to, you know, make it just be a portion, perhaps this one. And I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm just gonna take my paper like this and come up and make an angled pocket like that. Cute. Uh, I could have done a true triangle. I love those pockets too. But again, this is just to give us another tuck spot and where we can put one of these little cards I found. Not putting glue at the top. It gives me more real estate, more options of what size things are gonna fit in my pocket. Trim this up. I love having you know all these just little pieces to make my own ephemera with. We can add labels, we can add ribbons, we can layer this onto some more cardstock. So many fun things we can do. This little fox guy here needs a little ink. I think he's too tall to go that way. Here, I'll put him right there so maybe we can see his head when that's closed. This is the page that I thought instead of adding another pocket, maybe we will just collage on here. Let me grab Again, arms reach, so it still counts as being on my desk. I have some little quotes and little words and images that I've already stamped or written out in that little in that little piece. So I'm going to tear this to a little more a size I like a little bit better. It says be your beautiful self. Always a good reminder, right? And then Let's see what else we have to put on here. Yep, I think he went to the post office because the dogs are now protesting that he is gone. I don't wanna cover up too much of the pretty things. All right, so here's a confession. My doodad box that I'm supposed to be using my ephemera photo for, yeah. I need to just go through here and put more of it in the folder. Sometimes when I'm cleaning my desk off, it's just a little bit easier for me to throw pieces in here first and then um, and then put them in. So now I'm digging through the doodad box again, as I have done many times on camera. I know you guys will forgive me though, right? Oh, we can do a couple of these too. All right, let's see. This one caught my eye because I don't think I'm gonna put it on this page, but I'm gonna kind of cut it where it kind of looks like it has it printed with some, where it's supposed to look aged and torn. So I'm gonna just kind of, not being too careful, but just cut around to make it look a little raggedy and add a little ink. And now it's gonna look like an old piece of paper. I just, I don't quite want to cover up too much, but maybe, maybe I'll put, put it on here. I was just thinking to have some, some journaling space. The other option is I could put it here. Let's put it on this page. I'm gonna stop for separating over it. And I'm gonna offset that a little bit there. All right, so this needs a little bit darker ink, I think, to make it have that look I was going for. And this is, I didn't ink on the, the crease, but it can go over as far that way as I want without messing up, my, messing my little folio from folding up. 
we go. And now whoever has this will have the opportunity if they want to journal a little bit, write something down, add, add some thoughts. I guess I'm gonna put it up here. There we go. This page, if I use a piece of the pretty sunflower, I had a piece that was like a strip, I thought. We can make a pocket on this page. And it may have just been from the other piece. So, again, four and a half, because we had that half inch spine. So I am going to cut a piece that is, I think it's inch and a half tall and approximately, I don't know, four and a quarter inches wide. And it'll layer right in here. And it's the same pattern, just a different piece. So it, I think it'll look okay, not have a huge contrast with the pocket, but then we'll be able to put some things in here. And I certainly could have gone to a different pattern of paper, but I kind of liked this idea. Just stick that on there. And then maybe one of these pretty floral florals. This one's already inked. We'll put that there. And maybe, again, I also have these where I keep doodads. I'm just the doodad queen today. Let's find a little label that we like. Maybe something like that. And that one's pretty rough looking. Don't know what happened to it, but I'm gonna trim it up some. I actually, I do know what happened to it. I was, I cut these out with my Cricut and it obviously, I needed a new blade or my Cricut went a little crazy and chopped it up. Looks like it got gnawed on a little, but it's all right, look, it still works. So we're gonna glue that there. So we're making something a little eclectic, but I love it. Okay. And we definitely need something here, don't we? And I think this calls for something pretty. Let's just find maybe a strip here. We'll tear it so it'll have a little bit of a torn look. Just to cover up a little bit of that book page. And then I think something else for some writing space. So I'm gonna... We have this here. We'll just have kind of the two strips to make that look pretty. And then I'll find some kind of neutral, either some coffee dyed or tea dyed paper or just a neutral piece of book page or something here on my desk. Oh, I have a little piece. We have to, and I, I sometimes patch this together. Oh, look, here's a piece of cardstock. It's a little too wide and not quite tall enough. But, ah, look, ah, here we go. I am going to use the ruler and see approximately how wide this is. We are at not quite two and a half inch space. So I'm going to use my paper trimmer. And we'll go to two and a quarter. And again, it's not quite tall, you know, it doesn't quite fill the whole thing, but we'll use my trick that I use all the time and we'll just put a little piece of paper, like a torn piece of paper or a label there to make the top look pretty. It can come up, let's see. Maybe we'll use this to kind of bring that, bring that back in. Let's see what it looks like. I think that's okay to have it here and here. I have plenty of other papers if I didn't like how it looked that I could tear and put there. But we'll use this one. So I'm gonna glue this down first. So again, just some writing space for whoever has this little album. I'm gonna come up from the bottom a touch. 
where my where I can fold it. And then we'll just put that there to make it look like I taped it on, like a little faux torn piece of washi tape. I love washi tape too. <laughs> okay, there we go, there we go. We could have, again, we could decorate, have labels. There's so much we could do here. This could use, this could use some decoration and so could these. So let's go back. Let's see what I have in here. Let's see if I can just find a couple of numbers or labels or something, something that we can put on. Just having some pretend math theme go on. I don't think we need two. Maybe we'll use that one and not this one. And, you know, you can only have so much math. What does this say? Maybe put those numbers there. And then I also have, we'll, we'll think of something. So on this piece, I think I'm gonna put it just right up here in the corner. And I may go back later and add some more, I don't know. This piece I haven't done anything with yet, but I think I'm getting ready to call it quits. I'm always um, where I can just keep going further and further. And that's the fun thing about this type of crafting. So fun. I do think this will look better if I have a little bit of ink. Very sweet. Again, I definitely think I would enjoy having some more embellishment. Didn't put any of these in. We can tuck a few of those in. And here, here's an idea really quick because it is bothering me if you guys can't tell. I'm gonna chop this little journaling card so that we get the industrial looking kind of words and numbers, but just as a decoration. And I'm gonna just glue it down so it gives us something to look at. Breaks that up just a touch. So this is kind of, I think, in the, the spirit of a fall craft, but not traditional, like not necessarily the pumpkins and the cornucopias, those types of things, but some foliage, a bird, some flowers, the colors, didn't use that one. Okay, so when I'm really wanting to clear my desk off from all the scraps fast, look, I do that. <laughs> and then I have to clean up everything over here on this side in a little bit, but I'll do that in a minute. I promised you guys I would do a flip through of what we made at the end so that if you wanted to fast forward and look at our lovely creation before you decide if you wanna watch the full video, you can. So I'm gonna tie this up. I'm not gonna tie it as tight as I did last time because it was a little hard to get undone. Okay, there we go. Super cute seam binding closure. Beautiful bird on the front. It wraps around. This is from my Feeling Like Fall paper kit. The oranges are. And then we open it up and we have a pocket for some ephemera. We have a little pocket here and a flip open with a journaling spot. Another page with some journaling space. A diagonal triangle style pocket here. A tuck spot here. We could decorate there if we want to. And then just another pretty page. And then the back cover. There we go, that's what we made. I love it, I hope you guys do too. I hope you'll make one. Please give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. If you haven't already, subscribed to my channel. It helps a whole lot. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Have a great one.